taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy is forever. I'm here this morning so we can worship in giving. Are you glad about it? I will be reading my scripture will be coming from Malachi 3 and 10. And it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. What is God saying? God is saying, trust me today. Try me. Test me. And see that I won't give you a blessing. A blessings of overflow. Running over. Hallelujah. That's a promise, children. He's talking about being obedient to his word. When you put God's word into practice, everything changes. Tithing is a testing of our faith. It is the tenth part due to God. It is an act of our faith. So tell me, church, where's your faith this morning? Our shepherd, which is the Lord God, he desires our first fruit, not our leftovers. God wants our best because everything belongs to him. God gave the greatest gift when he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Are you glad about it this morning? If you are, say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. You can't beat God giving. Did you hear what I say? You can't beat God giving. Let us pray. Father, we honor you with our tithes and our offering this morning. We offer up to you with a grateful heart. Every good and perfect gift comes from you, God. God, this is for your glory. This is for the building of the kingdom. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You supply all our needs. It's in you that we live and move and have our very being. Father, we praise you. We bless you. We lift you up. Why? Because you're the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. In the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. For all that are giving this morning on your way out, a usher will be standing at the door to receive your tithes and offering with a bucket. Okay? And those that are giving online or text to give, the information is on the screen. Amen? Thank you very much. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Praise the Lord. Amen. The miracle message. And I ask if you would turn with me to St. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And we've already had this by Master Isaiah Newkirk. <laughs> and I'm just relaying it again. The miracle of Christmas is God coming to earth. And this was in fulfillment of scripture, prophesied over 4,000 years, 400 years before. Yes, it was to meet your needs and my meet needs, so God sent a miracle. Jesus Christ appeared into human history. He stepped into pre-planned profiles and molded itself with astonishing accuracy. You see, every phrase of his background, his birth, his life, his ministry, his death, his burial, and his resurrection had been pre-drawn 
by the Old Testament prophets and the fit so exact that the New Testament writers used it as a centerpiece of evidence proving his divine identity. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 12 at first. Now there was the same country. There were in the same country shepherds living in the fields, watching over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. In these verses, there was the unbelievable appearance of a real angel to shepherds. Now, shepherds would seldom be found worshiping and praising God. Why? Because of their low reputation. They were considered outcasts of society. An angel appears. The angel's appearance was the message of reassurance and good news. He proclaimed the Messiah's birth and charged the shepherds to visit the child. Verses 12, 13, and 14. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. There was the spectacular appearance of the heavenly host, and the word host means an army of angels, 10,000 times 10,000. God either gave the shepherds a special sight into the spiritual world or, or dimension and caused the spiritual dimension to appear to physical sight. 15 through 18, so it was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this Christ. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, and it was told them. Now the shepherds left praising God for what they had heard, what they had seen, and God had spoken to them, and they received the message. The message may have been given to a small group of shepherds, but this message was given to you, to me, and this is the way to get the gospel spread around the world. Uh, now, my co-laborers in Christ Jesus is going to come and give you points and the conclusion. Carry the message of Christ, a high calling from a low position, rejected of men and accepted by God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Carry, carry the message of Christ. After the angel had left, 
and the heavenly praise team had threw down praising God, they went back to heaven because they done their job. But then the shepherds, after they got over their fear and excitement and awe of what they had seen and heard, huh, the boys got busy. I'm quite sure they say it to themselves. Come on, y'all. We got to go now. We got to go see this thing. Which the angels had spoken to us from the Lord. They knew it was from the Lord. And I'm quite sure they went. I'm quite sure they were skipping and jumping and telling everybody they saw. But they went and they saw. They went. They already believed it. All that glory that was on them. Oh, Lord. They believed it already, but they had to go see for themselves. And then guess what? They went and they saw Mary and they saw Joseph and they saw the baby just as the angels had told them, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And it didn't take long. They didn't sit around and talk about it and gossip. Man, they went. My Bible tells me they went with haste and they went telling everybody the good news. They went and I can hear them now. Just telling everybody, a Savior is born for unto you this day. Born in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And he came for all people. He came for all of us. Christ the Lord. And they went, and they went. And guess what? They didn't think about whether they qualified. Man, that glory was on them so strong. They didn't even think that whether somebody was going to believe them or not believe them, they just went. Let me tell you one thing. The shepherds heard, they went, they saw, and they was on fire. They were never the same after they saw that. And guess what? See, I got to choose anybody. He chose the shepherds. He could have chose the people of high state, but he chose the shepherds, and they gloried in that. They gloried in that. They were chosen. And guess what? They went and they told the word. They told everybody. They spread the gospel. They carried the message of Christ. And God is calling on us to do the same thing. People need to hear about this Savior that we are serving, y'all. We done got too mediocre. We done been resting too much. We done been playing church and think it's all about coming to church and leaving. But people are hungry. They are thirsty. They need the Lord. And God is depending on us. Us. We got it. But guess what? We keeping it to ourselves. It's time out for that, man. People is dying every day, killing each other. Y'all hear about it just like I do. It's time out. God is calling us to a higher height, and we got to, you, you, all of us, we got to carry the message of Christ. The shepherds wasn't scared. They wasn't scared. The boys went. They did what they were called to do. They went. They were raising the sheep, and they were, I guess it was the sacrificial sheep. The boys was happy, because guess what? The last sacrifice was born. You know what I mean? The last sacrifice, that was happy, man. We got to be up in the mess with them sheep too much longer. And they carried the word of God. But you know what? I'm not going to be for you long. People need the Lord. And what a better time to tell somebody about the Lord that doing this season right here. I want, I want to ask y'all, do you notice how this time of the year it's a joy. It seems like God just came and sprinkled a joy over the world. The month of December and the closer they get to Christmas, seems like that joy just bubble over. People at work be happy. People in Walmart, everywhere you go, people is so happy. But guess what? That's the time to ease right on up in there and tell them to carry the message of Christ. That's the time. They are white. The Bible said they're right, and they are ready. They are ready, but they're waiting on us. They're waiting on us, and we got to do it. But the 
And guess what? Another good way to start. The Christmas story. Man, that is a good witnessing tool in and of itself. All you got to do, tell them about Mary and her obedience. And old Joe, like y'all call him, Joseph. After the angel talked to them, man, they received it. They were obedient. And they, and, and they did what the angel said. And when you're talking to people, you know they're going to always ask questions. That's why you got to be ready. And then some of them going to say, well, I'm telling you right now, I know about the Bible. I like the Bible. But I just don't understand the part about Mary getting pregnant and having a baby. And she ain't even did nothing with Joseph. That's when you step in and say, let me tell you something. Now I want to tell you about the power of the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost came upon Mary. And the spirit of the most high came and overshadowed her. And he made the impossible possible. And she conceived. And that baby that we're talking about that was in that manger was born. And then they might still want to wonder. You know, when you're trying to win souls for people, you got to um, talk a little more. So then you can tell them about John 3.16. How God so loved us. That's the reason for the Christmas story. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And guess what? One requirement. Whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And they might have another question. And they might say, well, I ain't living right, so maybe I'll do it another time. Then you can say, no, but you ain't let me finish. I got to tell you about John 3, 17. Because God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. And I'm going to end it with this. Jesus himself told us to carry the message of Christ. As he was descending into heaven and the disciples was gazing up at him, he told the disciples and he told us. And I'm going to paraphrase what he said. I can hear him saying now, y'all don't forget now. Go ye into the world. And preach the gospel, 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 gospel. Carry the message of Christ. A high calling from a low position. See, when we look throughout the Bible, we find that God often used ordinary people to accomplish something extraordinary. See, God doesn't look at potential in size or with strength, but he looks at the heart of an individual. Let's take Gideon for example. See, Gideon who confessed that he was the least of his family and he was the least of the tribes of Israel took 300 men of farmers and of shepherds and they defeated 135,000 experienced battle-tested soldiers. Let's look at King David. David was the youngest of eight brothers, and he was even overlooked by his own father when Samuel came to anoint the next king. And Jesse presented all of his sons, and God said, nope, that ain't it. So Samuel asked Jesse, do you have another little boy somewhere, maybe around here somewhere? And Jesse said, yeah, I got my little young lad. He's out back tending to the sheep. He said, well, go send and fetch for him, for we will not sit down until we see him. See, God will not allow you to push your agenda on him. See, Jesse thought that, sure, it had to be one of his big sons of, of great stature, uh, one of his sons that he'd probably been grooming from the day one to be king. See, we look on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart and courage of an individual. So David, uh, they went and got David, and when David walked in, the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for that is he. And the Bible says that Samuel took the horn of oil, and he anointed him in the midst of his brethren. See, God will anoint you in the midst of all those who thought that they should have been the choice. Amen, somebody. Keep in mind that David was just a little shepherd boy. See, think it not strange that God would use shepherds to deliver his miracle message. See, shepherds, they work long and hard hours in the field. 
They were under the stars at night and they would often been found spending time in prayer and meditation. See, they were close to God in their hearts, not with religious ceremonies. Okay, say amen, somebody. See, they were just the type of people that God often used when he wanted to uh, 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 accomplish something extraordinary. Let's look at verse 8. In the same region, there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. See, in other words, they were in position, being faithful over that which God had given them. Oh, I wish I had some help. I, I wish. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in position. See, regardless of how big or small the assignment is, if you stay in position and remain faithful, God can and will use you. I use the term stay because a lot of people, they get in position, but they don't remain faithful because as soon as the pastor take too long to anoint them or to elevate them, But see, if you were in a position of prayer, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith, and not man, God would redeem the time. Look at your neighbor and say, know your role. Let's look at verse 9 through 11. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were, I know I'm reading fast because I'm trying, I got four minutes, okay. And they were terribly frightened. Let me slow down. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I know I was going fast, y'all. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord, the Messiah. See, what the world needed then and needs even more today is a Savior. See, see, check it out. They need a Messiah. They need Christ, the anointed one. See, the one that would bring forth miracles, the one that would be talked about, spit on, mocked, and betrayed, the one that would be hung high and stretched wide. See, check this out, y'all. Check this out. He had the power to prevent it, but as you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, a place of pressing, a place of death, he said, Father, if thy be willing... Let this cup remove from me. But then he looked down into generations and he saw you and he saw me and he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. See, Jesus understood the assignment. He understood that he was the savior. He was the only one that could save us from our sins. Man, I feel like I'm preaching too hard. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, an angelic army, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. See, they were praising God because the baby Jesus had just been born. Can you imagine the Holy Ghost party that was going on in heaven when they found out that the Jesus, the Christ, had entered the world? See, we're talking about Jesus, the Messiah, the Holy Lamb of God, the one who would save us from us our sins, the one that would take our place on the cross and return give us his righteousness. See, that's enough right there to make everybody in here want to give God some praise. I don't know about you, but every time I hear the name of Jesus, I got a praise in my spirit. See, there's something down on the inside that wants to leap when I hear the name of Jesus. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. See, at that name of Jesus, demons tremble. At that name of Jesus, lives are transformed. At that name of Jesus, the very heavens are moved. See, sometimes I don't even got to hear the name of Jesus. I could just be walking down the road. I could be in my car driving. Or I could be at the gym working out. And when I think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, Hallelujah, for he is worthy. Hallelujah, he is worthy to be praised. 
I don't know how I'm going to go after the both of them. I'm not a hooper or a hollower, but I'll give you what God gave me. Okay, so my title is Rejected of Men Accepted by God. So let me tell you that when I first got this topic, I was like, how am I going to add this and tie this into the story of the shepherds? And, I, you know, I was praying, and God said, uh, well, well, why did you choose to announce the shepherds, the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, and not the kings and queens of the world? And this is where I started. I'm going to focus on the shepherds. Now, to answer that question is, one, because of their characteristics. Let me define what a characteristic is. It is a special quality or trait that makes a person, a thing, or a group different from others. When you think of strong leaders, you think of certain qualifications. You think of a willingness to sacrifice. You think of a willingness to ignore your own needs for the needs of the ones that you lead. They're strong protectors and they provide guidance, just to name a few. These are the characteristics of those shepherds. They tended the herd, they herded them, they fed them, and they guarded the sheep. Now, the scriptures say that Jesus is the good shepherd. These are all the things that Jesus does for us. And as I kept researching, I noticed that God has a habit of using shepherds. He used Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and King David. So it seems to me that God sent the shepherds to go see the lamb because they exhibited the characteristics that Jesus would one day come to display. Now, another reason that God chose the shepherds was because they were ordinary people. Shepherds were considered at the bottom of the social ladder. They shared the same status as tax collectors and dung sweepers. God came not only to save the kings and queens of the world, but he came to save the common man too. And last but not least, us Gentiles. Now, see, us Gentiles was on the outside of salvation. But when Jesus was born, that was the beginning of our invitation to salvation. Now, I know they already recited it, but I'm going to say it one more time. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, how many of us feel ordinary? I'm going to be the first one to say that I do. <laughs> okay, but one thing I want you to know is that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. God is the expert at adding his extra to your ordinary. Now, and the last reason that, you know, I came up with that God chose the shepherds was to, to receive the message because they were unclean. Now, you be thinking, what does unclean have to do with the Jesus message? Glad you asked. <laughs> well, the shepherds were considered unclean because of the nature of their job. They were in contact with smelly sheep, their poop, the blood from their cuts and their scrapes, and the insects in their wool. It was so bad that they weren't even allowed to worship with everybody else in the temple. Now, let me give you a definition of unclean. The, it, it means containing impurities or contaminated with infected organisms. Now, I want you to keep that in the side of your mind for a second. Uh, you may be still asking, well, what that have to do with the shepherds and being unclean? Well, we are contaminated with impurities and contaminated with the infected organism called sin. It is not until we accept Jesus as our Savior that we become new. Now, I want to point out something. A lot of times we feel like we need to clean ourselves up before we come to Jesus. But that's the wrong way of thinking. All he wants us to do is do as the shepherds did and come as is. Now, a lot of us know that when we buy a car, as is mean, taking it, no warranty. If it's got a ding or a scrape or dirt on the carpet or the engine don't work, that's how you take it. But that's how God wants us with our dings, our scrapes, our bad transmission, our messed up engine. He wants us as is. When the angels told of Jesus' birth, they went right away to Jesus. They didn't wash. They didn't grab a snack. They didn't even brush their teeth. They went right away. Then they came to Jesus as they were, and it was good enough. 
Because even in our sin, we are good enough. So I want you to think about this. God sent the unclean shepherds to go see about the lamb that will open the door to our salvation. Not only did he send them, but they left to spread the word of Jesus to everybody that they saw after they left. Now, after you meet with Jesus, you can't help but spread the good news because you are no longer the same. All right, to sum it all up, I'm summing it all up, y'all. God specializes. He specializes in the unclean and the unwelcome. There is room for all of us in the presence of the Lord. We can't let our guilt and our shame disqualify our value. In this text, God showed us through the shepherds that he is willing to pay the price so that we can be near to him. If, we, if he is willing to pay that kind of price, how more, much more accepted do we have to be? Now, I'm going to leave you with a question. Will you accept the acceptance or will you stay rejected? Uh, I'm Elder Don Melvin, and, and uh, I'm coming this morning to uh, summarize and to pull together the message of our text, uh, Luke 2, 8 through 20, uh, the miracle message, and to give the conclusion of the matter, amen? And in doing so, I hope to answer any questions that may also linger. It came upon a midnight clear. Oh, holy night, when Christ was born. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now this angel delivered a message that the world had been waiting to hear for 4,000 years. Ever since man sinned in the Garden of Eden, the world has been under the curse brought by that sin. In Genesis 3 and 15, the Lord made a promise at that time to Adam and Eve that one day a woman would bear a son and that son would destroy the power of sin and redeem the world. The angel tells the shepherd about the birth of the baby being born in birth Bethlehem. He gives the infant three names or titles. He tells them that the baby will be Savior, Christ, and Lord. These three names or titles are important because they reveal the identity and the ministry of the baby. He is called Savior. Matthew 1 and 21 says that his name will be called Jesus. Jehovah is salvation because he came to save his people from their sin. He's called Christ. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, has us to understand that the meaning of this word anointed one, uh, the, word, the, the meaning of the word Christ is anointed one, and this name identifies this baby as the long-awaited Messiah of the Jews. He is the one who will fulfill the Old Testament prophecy. He is the one who will reconcile men to God. He is the one to whom all sacrifices and types that are shown in the Old Testament have pointed to. He is called Lord. This name portrays him as the one in control. He is the Savior, but he is also the Sovereign, the Supreme Ruler. That baby was God in human flesh. John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus, became, Jesus is the Word. In 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So the Creator became a man. The eternal Lord of glory stepped out of eternity into our time. This angel shared the good news that God's ancient promise from Genesis 53, 15 was being fulfilled. Now, after I read this passage, I asked the question, why did God choose the shepherds to get this message out into the world about the Messiah's birth? Especially 
since shepherds in Israel was the lowest of tasks. Shepherds were not taught the law. They were considered ignorant. Their work made them ceremonially, ceremoniously unclean. And according to one Jewish writer, shepherds were not trustworthy enough to be used as witnesses in court. They wouldn't even allow them to be witnesses in court. So why tell them? I'm glad you asked. I discovered that God chose the shepherds for two reasons. One, that the gospel is for the simple and not for the sophisticated. One source says that the go if the gospel were complicated, were a complicated philosophy that required a high IQ and years of study, that those who had attained it could congratulate themselves on how much, how, how much more intelligent they were than the rest of the population. And those who were illiterate and not as intellectually gifted could never hope to obtain salvation. But God, who is rich in mercy, announced first this very important piece to uh, the shepherds in the field. The second reason he did it was because the gospel involves the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Could it be that the very sheep that these men were tending in the fields that night were being prepared for slaughter at the Passover in Jerusalem a few months later? What symbolism that the shepherds who were watching the Passover lambs would be invited to Bethlehem to see the Passover lamb which God himself had provided for the salvation of the world. Did you know that God has a special place in his heart for shepherds? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were shepherds. And then there's David who was called from tending sheep to shepherds, God's people. And in John 10, verse 11, Jesus says of himself, I am the good shepherd. The shepherds were excited to receive this message. Verse 15 says that the shepherds said to one another, let us go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord had made known to us. They went, they saw, they believed, and they told others. The pastor said that they made the word known abroad, saying that which was told them concerning this child. Now, it was 30 years before Jesus began his ministry on earth, and Isaiah 53, 3 tells us that during his ministry on earth, that he was despised and rejected of men, that they were, they were looking for a conquering king, not a crucified one. But thanks be to God, the Father, that Jesus' sacrifice was accepted for the atonement of our sin. Hallelujah. Psalm 118 and 22 says that the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone of God's new house, the church. This sweet baby who was born in a smelly stable, lying in a manger, a trough for feeding dirty animals, was Savior, Christ, and Lord. What a high calling from a low position. After the shepherds heard the message and they saw the baby in the manger, they made it known abroad, going out and sharing the message. They carried the message of Christ. This morning, you have heard the message, you've heard the miracle message that Jesus is Savior that Jesus is Christ, that Jesus is Lord, that he was born and he died for our salvation. Now, you may, you may consider yourself a nobody when it comes to the gospel, 
But if you have received and believed the miracle message, the gospel of your salvation, you can tell everybody about somebody, Jesus, who can save anybody. Amen? Carry the message. 